I listen regularly from my community, but I also listen from my creations. Our plans felt very lonely, so I decided to give them some not safe for work activities. Sexual reproduction. Hi there! For those of you new here, what you're seeing is called Biomaker CA. It is an artificial life simulation where we simulate biomes of plant-like organisms. Each plant is composed of several individual cells or agents that independently decide what to do based on their internal states and direct neighbors. An organism would be uniquely identified by the fact that each cell of that organism has the exact same DNA. You can see that each plant has a slightly different hue, making it easier to understand whose organism a cell belongs to. To survive, plants need to extract two kinds of nutrients, air and earth nutrients, and share them throughout their bodies. However, plants are not immortal, and they will eventually die of old age. Because of that, they need to reproduce. Until now, the only way was to create a fuchsia flower that, under certain conditions, would trigger an asexual reproduction event. The flower would die, and a seed with a different DNA would be born nearby. The new DNA would be a variation of the original DNA, and the new organism is born. So, to formalize the general concept of asexual reproduction, we can say that a parent DNA gets mutated by a mutator into a brand new child DNA. Now, this kind of asexual reproduction is quite powerful, but nature has also discovered a different kind of reproduction, sexual reproduction. Everybody probably knows what it means, but let me state it for the sake of argument. With sexual reproduction, a new DNA is generated from two parents' DNAs. In particular, a widespread property is that reproduction only happens between individuals of a different sex. This is not a requirement, as we will see later, but it seems to be the default. Okay, cool, but why should we care about sexual reproduction if asexual reproduction seems perfectly fine for our experiments? Well, the answer is not that simple. It's not that sexual reproduction is superior to asexual reproduction. In fact, the world is full of asexual life forms. Different reproduction strategies each have their own advantages and shortcomings, so my current approach is give the user both options and see where they each go to. Alright, so how do we add sexual reproduction to Biomaker CA? Here is my approach. We create a new agent cell specialization. As a reminder, agent cells, that is, plant cells, start as unspecialized and can specialize into leaf, root and flower. The flower specialization was the one responsible for asexual reproduction. So, I simply created a new specialization called, very creatively, flower sexual. Much like in the asexual reproduction case, a sexual flower, if nearby air cell, can trigger a sexual reproduction operation. However, for it to work, another sexual flower of a different sex needs to trigger a reproduction operation at the same time. If this happens, there is a chance that a new seed is generated in the neighborhood of a random parent with a brand new DNA. Note the requirement of wanting to trigger the operation at the same time, because it will be quite a big downside, but at least it's good looking. Flowers remain until sexual reproduction is triggered. Now, how do we create a brand new DNA from two parents? Well, the general approach is to use a sexual mutator that takes as input two DNAs and generates a new one. In my experiments, I implemented a crossing over operator that recombines the parent DNAs by selecting randomly contiguous strings from one or the other. Then, because I also want the values of the DNA to vary, I also perform an extra step for genetic variation which, for now, is always using an asexual mutator. Now that we know what we're doing, let's look at how sexual reproduction fares in a standard, easy environment. We initialize a lot of different DNAs into seeds, each with one of two possible sexes. Here, plants can only reproduce sexually. It starts well, but unfortunately, sexual reproduction is quite slow and unreliable. It doesn't just depend on you, but also on some other plant of a different sex. And when, by chance, reproduction triggers misalign, plants can easily die out until there is only one sex left, which, of course, ensures the death of the species. It is natural that sexual reproduction is less frequent than asexual reproduction, and even more so with the possibly arbitrary decisions I made in this current design. Hence, it is likely that we would need a much bigger environment and overall number of individuals to have a stable biome. This next simulation does just that. The environment is 2.5 times wider. As far as I could tell, the simulation is stable, which is great. Also, 
I like the diversity of plants that we observe, but in the long term, a uniform environment would anyway converge to uniform phenotypes, so we shouldn't overly focus about this. So, a wider environment solves this problem, but you know what else we could have done? Simply not bother with different sexes. If you allowed sexual reproduction to, well, ignore the sex, even the smaller environment works. However, notice that eventually the number of sexes becomes one, and that is a very bad sign. It is quite likely that what happened is that one specific plant reproduced with itself several times, a process called selfing, which would essentially be a more convoluted way of performing asexual reproduction. Wherever non-sexual reproduction would work, selfing is fine, but notice that this destroys the diversity of a population, and one of the main arguments in favor of using sexual reproduction is that it inherently prohibits selfing. So, cool that we could do that, but let's not do it anymore. From now on, again, no selfing allowed. Now it's time to add asexual reproduction to the equation. What would happen if plants could perform both? Would they coexist, or would one take over? Try to guess, and as a hint, what I'm showing you is a much larger environment than before. It is twice the size of the larger environment, and five times the size of the original one. It is so big that I had to optimize my codebase to allow for sparse computations of agent logics. You would think that this environment has enough space for diversity to emerge and nothing would dominate, but that is not how uniform environments work. You can clearly see that asexual reproduction is much more frequent than sexual reproduction, but it is actually even worse than that. Both asexual and sexual reproductions are capped at at most two each per step. This is to simulate a constraint of resources. Imagine it as some bees or birds going around. Well, the asexual reproduction is pretty much always performing two reproductions per step, while the sexual one is much, much lower and rapidly decreases in frequency. So this difference and the domination of asexual reproduction would be even more stark if there were resources available for this kind of reproduction. And even this way, relatively quickly, only one sex remains and sexual reproduction ceases to exist. A bummer. But then you may be asking this question. Does this simulation have anything to do with the real world? You know, because sexual reproduction does exist here, and it even took over gigantic sets of species. Perhaps there is something fundamentally different between the real world and this environment that makes sexual reproduction to not be viable strategy here. And the devil may very well be in the detail of the environment, or the way that sexual reproduction is performed. On the other hand, you may be asking yourself, how did sexual reproduction appear in the real world? Clearly, we started with asexual reproduction, and there must have been a period where both existed, and sexual reproduction likely slowly took over, until asexual reproduction was simply superfluous for some species. How do we simulate that? Well, the good news is that many biologists have thought of these questions and they have answers. Part of the equation is that what I called as sex started as a marker. It didn't affect your phenotype at first, and it was only used as a discriminator, for instance, to prevent selfing. In effect, the sex that we assigned to previous experiments was indeed just a marker. But what I didn't tell you is that these markers may also vary with random mutations, and we could have one, two, infinite sexes. A species might be unisex for a while, and then suddenly develop markers for sex and perform sexual reproduction. So, let's run our previous simulation again, but this time, let's add a high variability on the gene that encodes the sex. As you can immediately see, sexes immediately become more than simply two, and sexual reproduction will always remain as an option. It may be forgotten for a while, although in this simulation it never is, but it will always remain as a possibility, and diversification and a selective pressure for sexual reproduction may arise. I hope that these simulations have sparked your interest in this question. How does sexual reproduction arise and when does it take over? I was obsessed with this last question for way too long and I swear I could not find a single experiment where my asexual reproduction strategy would be worse than the sexual reproductions. I think that part of the problem is that my environments and experiments are still quite too uniform or with a smooth fitness landscape and my version of asexual reproduction is simply already very good at evolving for these kinds of environments. Plus, asexual reproduction happens faster, so more generations can occur with the same time frame. But wouldn't it be cheating if I artificially made it easier to perform sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction is harder, and yet it took over sometimes. What experiments would showcase that? I don't yet know. Do you have any thoughts? Or even better, do you want to try? As usual, 
all of my experiments are reproducible online on a Google Colab, link in the description, and the project is open source. Regardless, I thought that what I got so far was worth sharing. Let me know what you think. Until next time!